Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani, Microsoft Business Applications MVP. In this video, we will explore flow trigger conditions. Trigger conditions allow you to conditionally trigger your flows based on specific scenarios. The advantages here is your flow only runs when required and you save API calls. What are API calls? If you go to aka dot ms slash service limits and I will put this link in the description of this video as well as a user who has a valid license related to the power platform you have something called as request limits and these request limits are a limit based on the number of API requests that you make within a 24 hour time span so for example if you have the standard office licenses that include Power Apps and Power Automate, you have 2000 API requests per day. And what is an API request? Every step, every action, every query that you make, whether that query takes place in Power Apps or whether that query takes place in Power Automate in a day, you have a limit and that is called the request allocation limit, which is a 24 hour period for you to be within. Now, if you exceed this number consistently, then you will get a notification email that you need to buy additional licensing so you can increase your API request limit. If you've never checked out the, this uh, API request limit, I highly recommend you to check this link out. I will put this link in the description of this video. So you need to be aware that you have a limited set of calls, again, depending upon your license. So you need to be extremely diligent in ensuring that you call your flows only and only when required. I'm triggering my flow when an item is created or modified. Now, within my flow, if I am updating the same item, okay, so let's say I go to SharePoint and I say, yeah, I want to update the item and I pick up date item and I pick my site, I pick my list, I pick my ID and ID will come from the same ID of my trigger right here. Right? And let's say I update something, I update, let's say, uh, I need to plug in the title of course because it's a mandatory field and my category uh, is IT and let's say I update the description to updated text, whatever, right? I'm updating the item. Now if I save this flow, and I won't run this because if I do, I will run into a terrible scenario. And that scenario is known as the race condition. So what will happen is the flow will get triggered, right? And the flow triggers when an item is created or modified, this will in turn go ahead and update the item, right? This will go ahead and update the item. Now, because I'm updating the same item, remember the flow is getting triggered whenever any item is added or updated. So it will get called again and again and again and again. And this will run into an infinite loop until the system automatically times these cases out. Okay. So there is, there is logic baked in wherein this will get stopped after a peculiar amount of time. But guess what? It's not a question of amount of time. It's a question of your flow runs. You will be wasting all your flow runs, right? All your API requests will be gone. That's because mistakenly you updated the same item or maybe that's your use case. You want to update the item, right? and you're running into problems. Now, how do I solve a scenario like this? I will show you two tricks to get around this one. Trick number one, because my flow is running when an item is created or modified, right? It's an automated flow. It triggers automatically based on a condition. Remember the flow runs in the context of the accounts the connector is associated with. So in my scenario, if you look at my connection in question right here, the connection is related to my account that is Reza's account. Now let's take a use case wherein I log in with a separate user. So let me go ahead and log in with user number two. Okay. So here comes user number two, right? And this is a completely separate user right now who's logged in. Now, many a times what we do is we build flows for automating our business processes, of course. Now, if within the flow, I'm updating the same item, I will run into the race condition, right? but my flow is running the context of an account and the account is Reza. Now, typically in scenarios like these, I recommend something known as a service account and a service account is nothing but a standard account in your Office 365 tenant that has a valid license. So just like it says Reza, it says service SVC, whatever you want to call that account as admin or service or whatever that account is. And you can use that account for building these kind of business process oriented flows. 
So let's assume that my account is that service account. Okay, Reza's account is that service account in action. Now, how do I get this to work? Wherein, even when I modify the file, right through my flow, it doesn't run into that race condition. And what's that race condition? Race condition is it will trigger the flow again and again and again and again. How do I stop that? Once again, let's look at our expression. This time, let's write a completely new expression right here. When the item gets updated, right? When the item gets updated in the flow, it will get updated with whose account? Reza's account, because Reza's account is running the flow or my service account is running the flow. So if I head back to my expression and if I search for, so you go to search for modified by, okay? You got to search for modified by. And let's say I want to plug in, I want to check to see if the modified by user is Reza or not, or my service account or not. I can use modified by email right here. Okay, so I'm just going to compare it with my email address right here. And this time, what I can do is I can go ahead and do an equals operation right here. Okay, and right here, I am going to plug in my email address. Now, my email address, I will just go ahead and copy this okay remember i'm using a service account to run the flow so let's say this is my address i plug this in so if the modifier equals to reza that is my condition but remember i want to run my flow and the modifier is not reza so i'm just going to decorate this by the not operator click out my function is valid okay and of course you can go to the next line as well so here's my expression i'm going to copy this head back here go to settings add the condition, plug my condition right here, decorate it with the add symbol, hit done. All I've done right now is I'm telling the flow not to trigger if the item is modified by Reza. Okay, and Reza is what? Reza is my service account. It's the account under which the flow is running. Okay, now I will go ahead and I will save this flow. If the other user comes back in, so I'm going to log in back with the other user, and this time this user goes ahead and let's say creates an item, it's called ticket number four. And let's say I just save this. I just created an item. And let's say this user goes and modifies ticket number one as well. So ticket number one uh, gets updated. I right? change the title. It's keeping it simple right now. Click on save. So this user came in and made two changes. Typically, you would run into a race scenario. Why? Because the flow would get triggered on both the cases and go ahead and update the item. And that's a problem because updating would re-trigger the flow waste all your request limits. You don't want that to happen. Now, if I head back and if I look at my flow, my flow has ran in both the scenarios. But if you notice, I don't run into a race condition. The flow has not re-triggered again, even though I have updated my item within the flow itself. And that is because of the condition that I put in place. Now, if I head back to my the other user and if I refresh my SharePoint list, you will notice that the flow has updated because you notice the description says updated text. I updated the description through my flow. So that's one way of defining defining a trigger condition in which you do not run into the race condition. Very, very important to understand. I see this request a lot. I want to trigger my flow only when a peculiar column value is updated. Okay, that is a column value has changed. So for example, let's say I update this item. I'm going to change this to testing and I save this. My flow should not trigger, but if the category column is changed, then my flow should trigger. So let's say that's my use case. I want to only trigger it when this column value changes. Now, one very important thing to notice, if you want to handle a scenario like this, the key is going to be for you to have some sort of interaction with Power Apps. It could be a standalone app or it could be a SharePoint customized form. So I'm going to go ahead and customize my list using Power Apps. And this will go ahead and create a standard three screen app for me. This is good enough for the demo purpose. If you notice, I've gone ahead and customized my form, right? Here's my form, here's my data. Now, what I want to do in this scenario is I want to only have my flow run when this value changes. What I need hidden column. So I'm going to head back to my list and create a column and I'm going to call this column run the flow. Okay. It's created a column called run the flow and uh, it's of type single line of text and I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, uh, let me first go and make sure that it's my app is displayed. So I'm just changing the theme. 
and I'm going to save this and I will go ahead and publish this change and once this change takes effect if I look at data sources I have my tickets list I will click on refresh so it will refresh the schema for me and I have that column as a hidden column but right here if I go to fields even though that column is hidden which was uh, run the flow it's available right here for me so this gets added to the screen right here now the first thing is if you want to make changes to this you have to unlock this so I will go ahead and unlock this now when the user edits the form then I want my scenario to be a little different so what do I do in that case for my main column which is run the flow right I will look at the default value of this card and what I want to do is I want to set the default value of this card to yes or no depending on whether or not the category column has changed this value or not. And of course the user can only change the value if the user is in edit mode. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if this form is in edit mode. So if SharePoint form one dot display mode is display mode dot edit. If it is in edit mode, so let's say in that case, I will say yes to running the workflow. Otherwise I will say no. Okay. That means Right now, as you can see, I've edited this form. I'm doing it in edit mode. So it tells me that yes, yes, you know, it the workflow is going to run. But I want the workflow to run only if this category value changes. Now, in order for me to do that, what I need to do is I need to go ahead and figure out where is this value first of all coming from. So if I pick this entire card, notice the entire card is selected. If I go to advanced and if I search for default, this value is coming from this item dot category. So this holds the current value of the item before saving. However, when the user makes a change, he makes a change right here. So if I select this drop down in my case, it could be a text in your, your case, it could be a date column, whatever your use case is. In my case, it's this data card value. So I'm going to copy this, head over right here and change the scenario to and this data card value dot selected dot value because in my case, it's a choice field, right? is not equal to this item dot this item dot category because that's the name of the column dot value now why this item dot category once again because that's the default value of my data card that is coming from my data source but when i'm comparing it to data card value dot selected dot value that is the live value that is changing here and just to make sure that what what i am saying is correct if you notice right here it says no run the flow is showing as no that means the value has not changed, which is true. And if I play this app and if I change this to security, this changes to yes. If I change back to IT, it changes to no. That's exactly what I want. Now I will go ahead and save this and, and I do not need to show this data card, of course. So I can go ahead and change the visibility of this to false. So that's the trick. Create a column, hide the column. You don't need versioning for this, by the way. So just create the column, hide the column. Okay, go to your card modify the card and write this logic and I've gone ahead and published my app. Now I'm back in power apps or back in SharePoint. So I'm going to go ahead and clear all my items, head over to compose. I will go ahead and write my condition. So my condition right here is going to be, so search for run the flow dynamic content and equals. So run the flow equals. Yes. I want to run this flow only when this condition is true. So copy this. Go ahead, put it in your trigger condition. Now your flow will only and only run when that item or that category column is updated. Otherwise it will not run. And let's look at this in action. Okay. This time I don't need the compose action right here. So I'm going to delete this I can keep it if I want. And I am updating the item as well right here. Now I can even use it in a scenario like this, wherein I do not want to run the flow when I'm updating the item. I don't want the race condition. Well, I can just write no over here. Easy. Very, very simple, right? Now I can go ahead and click on save. Now it says there's an error. That's because I forgot to add the add symbol. Let me add the add symbol right here. Click on done. Click on flow checker. No errors. Let's click on save. Now, if I head back to my flow, let's say I create a new ticket. Okay. I'm going to call this ticket one. And I'm going to click on save. Let's create another one called ticket two. Now in both the conditions, notice run the flow is no. 
Now, why is run the flow? No, because when this item got created in that expression that I wrote, that logic that I wrote, it's setting it as no. Now, if you wanted to set, as a, set it as yes, if a new item is created in that flow itself, I could have written another action that said, hey, if my form mode is new, then please set it as yes, because I just want to run the flow. So right now it is no. Now, if we head back to this flow and if I refresh this flow, you will notice that the flow has not run. It's been over 26 minutes. These are my previous runs. The flow has not run. But if I head back to ticket two, edit the ticket, and let's say I change the category, change it to IT, click on save, notice this change to yes. I'm gonna head over to ticket one, edit this, and let's say I pick security, click on save, notice this has changed to yes. So now in both these conditions, because I have changed the value of the category column, if I head back to my flow and refresh my flow, you will notice that the flow will run. And as you can see, three seconds ago, both my flows have run. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and edit this item. And let's say I change my description to testing. I don't change the category value and I click on save. Now, the moment I do this, notice the description change, but look at run the flow. It is still no. That's because this value did not get updated. Now, let's say in this case, if I truly change this value and maybe I'm changing other things as well, but if I change this now, I changed it from IT to security. Now, when I click on the save button, notice this changes to yes and my flow will run. So you can conditionally run your flows only when a particular column value has changed. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.